So I'm a lifelong liberal socialist Democrat, and I want to share my story about why I walked away. I grew up uh, actually um, during the Reagan and, and Bush era uh, in small town Wisconsin. I grew up, uh, uh, you know, traditional American values, church, and uh, you know, red, white, and blue. And, and I believed all of it, of course, as, as we're children, of course we do. And then I went to college and sort of became indoctrinated as we all are in college with the more liberal thought system. I started to question my belief in God and my religion. And I studied business, and, and by the time, you know, pretty quickly in college, I, I guess I became a liberal. I, I believed in, in progressive values, and um, I, went, I got my MBA. After that, I moved to, to Seattle. So you can imagine, I didn't know too many conservatives uh, in Seattle, especially in the, uh, in the software technology industry where I worked. And... The thing is, I, I became more and more liberal. I became, you know, a, a true progressive. I, uh, John Kerry wasn't far enough to the left. Nobody was. I probably would have been thrilled at the time in the early 2000s with um, the current situation on the left uh, because my, because I guess George Bush, you know, I think that might have been one of the causes for a lot of, a lot of this is that, you know, George Bush, um, you know, what happened with 9-11 and afterwards with the, uh, with the escalation of, of the, the military and, and really the, the propaganda in the media, very similar to what's happening today um, on the left, um, many of us became, you know, became really hardened against the conservatives and even looked to sort of blame all our problems on, on conservative ideology. We blamed you know, corporations and, and, and the wealthy elite for all of our problems. And, and you know, this is kind of, I think, the, uh, the strain of the thought system that led to where we are today. Eventually, my, my hatred for conservatism, you know, I was an atheist or an agnostic, and I was just, just you know, liberal, progressive, socialist, green, even borderline activist. Um, and I just, I, I, I began to even loathe my country, to be honest. And at some point, I decided to move to, to Europe. So since, uh, for, the, well, for the past 15 years, actually, I've been living in a social democracy, a social a social democratic country in Europe, and um, you know, doing business from here and, and things. And I can tell you, you know, while I enjoy living here, it's probably not because of the of the socialist uh, government. Um, it was better when when it was still a democracy, but of course now here where I am, um, you know, we're locked down in a state of emergency. Democracy suspended because of of, of COVID, and you know, a total of sixty people have died. And, 60, 60 people have, have, have passed away tragically from this um, in the past seven months. And for that reason, we're all under lockdown and democracy has been, been suspended. It's a story being played out around the world, not unique to where I live. But, you know, I, I thought it was interesting uh, that I share my story because I've been through so many phases, sort of growing up conservative and, 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 and really a change in my affiliations for, for really all of my adult life, even going into, I guess, um, you know, Obama was disappointing. It wasn't left enough, didn't do enough, according to my views. And then, you know, Hillary Clinton, you know, I was, I was rooting for Bernie, good old socialist, was going to change America. And, 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 you know, when Hillary came in, part of me started, started hoping that Trump was going to win just because I didn't like Hillary. And um, aside from that, I sort of tuned out politics. I was very politically uh, active um, you know, years ago when I was living in the U.S. and, and I just sort of tried to tune that out of my life and haven't paid a whole lot of attention. I, my, my opinion had been for all these years that both Democrats and Republicans are sort of doing the same thing, the same corporate agenda, the same, uh, you know, globalist agenda. And it really doesn't make a difference who wins. It's sort of just the, uh, the you know, the language that's different and, 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 they're, and they're, you know, the way they get us to vote based on conservative or liberal issues, social issues and things like this. So, you know, I really didn't pay much attention to it. Um, I sort of heard just like, you know, as we all did about how bad Trump is and how racist he is. And I sort of, I never actually heard any comments that he said uh, where I felt that bothered by so much, but I just sort of took, I took the, you know, the conventional wisdom to some extent and said, okay, I guess he, he probably is one of these, you know, far right racist, xenophobe, homophobes, whatever they want to call him. And the thing is, you know, 
with this lockdown, with, with the COVID situation, it's really exposed the reality, I think, of the liberal, the far left Democrat agenda, because we see it playing out all throughout the world. Now, what do I mean by this? Um, my, my main concern, and one of the, the main reasons I walked away from, from progressivism and from Democrats is not because I don't share the values, you know, the positive values of, of a green economy, of um, you know, opportunity for all, uh, you know, preventing, you know, taking care of the environment and, and these really fantastic causes, social justice. Um, you know, of course, who wouldn't share these ideas? These are, these are human ideas, that, that basic fairness and respecting the, the nature and the planet where we live. But the problem I have, and there's a couple, the first one I want to talk about, the problem that led to me, me to this huge switch to become a, a Trump supporter is, is how the left has no respect for personal freedom, for liberty. Um, you know, it's symbolic, I guess, that I live in a country now that is that was under communist rule for 45 years, so around 1945 to around 1990, and the people here seem to have forgotten the lessons of communism. Um, the world seems to have forgotten what happened during communism, where, where the government assumed all the power, uh, there was no guarantee of personal liberty, of freedom of speech. Um, the government, the state, had, had all the power to tell everyone what to do, and there was nothing you could do about it. And in effect, that's the world we're living in now, in most countries, not all countries, essentially in the world right now, and, and including the democratic-controlled states in the U.S., I never thought I would see that happen in the U.S. And if there's any hope of this, of this, uh, of the world going back to some sort of decency in terms of personal liberty and, and human dignity, um, I think Trump is going to have to win this election and 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 start and set an example for the rest of the world. So that's the first problem I have. I mean, you cannot force someone to stay home or to or to wear masks. It's it's not right. You cannot impose your um, your mandates without any uh, support. You cannot declare a state of emergency because of a rather normal flu in all these countries um, and, and, and take over the media with propaganda, uh, whether it be about COVID or whether it's about Trump for the previous four or five years in the U.S. You know, the corporate media is serving, serving the far left agenda. And of course, it's not just about the deep state. It's very easy to say, well, uh, there's, you know, the players at work here could be the, uh, what is, the, the Great Reset, the World Economic Forum, part of the UN, uh, where, they're, where they're propagating this, uh, this idea of a, a Great Reset, which is a future of essentially some sort of, um, you know, they don't call it communism or socialism, but it's not capitalism and it's not exactly socialism. It's the state assuming a lot of power over everything, um, even, you know, forced vaccinations, um, you know, whatever, there's no limit to, to what the state can do and how business will join together, even augmenting humanity with, with technology by force, potentially. So this is where absolutely anybody, any decent human being needs to look at the reality and say, this is not right. It's not according to nature. Um, things went too far. And it's not, but I said, it's not just about the, the deep state. I don't believe it's just about the deep state. It's not just about a few players are trying to pull this off because a massive number of people around the world actually agree with this stuff. And I was thinking about that. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be successful what they're telling us in the media um, about, about Trump and about, and about, you know, staying home and being afraid of a, of a rather normal flu virus. Um, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have had this impact if, if a huge percentage of people didn't fully agree with it. And I started thinking about the people who I know, you know, not all of them, but some people who I know, for a long time, they've been so afraid of getting sick, you know? Um, make sure your kids have all these extra layers and, and, and just, oh my gosh, don't, are you sick, are you sick? Please don't get sick. It, people who, who, who spend, you know, so many years of their life in university, and, and coming out at certain, you know, 22, 23 years old, basically with no real world skills, kind of being used to have a situation where they're being taken care of by, and this is, I'm talking about in, in, in where I live, um, where free education through university, um, but also to some extent of the US that, the, the, you know, what we're learning in universities doesn't prepare us for free thinking, for contributing to society for creating for creating businesses or creating art or whatever it may be it's more about how to conform 
um, and how to be taken care of by a, by a system or by a large corporation or government. And so you have these people coming out of universities just trying to you know, get a job where it's secure, where the state's paying for it or, or in, in a big company or something. And you just have this attitude that, that everybody's supposed to take care of you. Uh, you're scared of other people. You you kind of withdraw. You you don't you, you know you you're kind of against against. Uh, you're not open. You're not you know, open heart, open mind. There's a certain strain of this liberalism that that is just kind of it's kind of like like um, death. <laughs> it's just the values of of death. You, you know, stay home. Don't do anything. Um, Shop, you know, don't communicate, keep to yourself, avoid people. Everything's dangerous and scary. Of course, God doesn't exist. And the problem is there's no, there's no possibility with this value system, with this way of life, that you're going to ever get to a point where you're actually happy. And, and that's what happened to me. I, I, when I turned around age 40, I realized that I was becoming increasingly miserable with my value system. And, and I, I turned to, to spirituality and I, and I spiritually awakened, I found God. And, and not long after that, it's sort of, you know, now I understand the need for personal liberty and freedom and what that means. And, you, and, 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 you know, it's not about an agenda. The, on, the, on the progressive left, on the far left side, it's, it's about this, um, it's really about ego. And if you, if you study ego from people like Eckhart Tolle or A Course in Miracles, or there's many other books out there. I write about this a lot. That ego is all about you know, playing the victim or, or you know, attacking someone for doing something wrong and um, fearing everything you know, and, and trying to control other people. This is a big part of this as well, this need. These people who, who are aligned with this, they love wearing masks. They love making you wear masks. They love, oh, and they hate business people. They hate business. They hate anybody who does something on their own and makes a lot of money and has some success. They want that destroyed. So if you look at what's happening now in the economy, the way that it is, where, we, where this, these, these people are shutting down the economy, um, they're getting everything they want. So you can argue all you want to about the numbers, about the low death rates of, of COVID and everything else, but they don't want to hear it because they like all of this and they want a future like this. They want forced vaccinations. They want you to wear a mask because they think it's gross. Those germs are gross. And, and, and they, you know, that's just what they want. It's, it's a version of life, as I said, that's more, a little bit more like death than life. And that's just, you know, as I look at this and I live it as we all do right now, I don't want it. You know, like I said, I want the values of equality. I want, I want gender equality. I want racial justice. I want uh, to end poverty, you know. And, I've, and I'm doing all these things, but as a conservative, I'm doing it. As someone who believes in God, as someone who knows what God is, well, and my true identity as, as spirit, as consciousness. And, and I love what Trump is doing. You know, I watch these rallies. I listen to the man talk. I can listen to him talk for, I listen to the Rush Limbaugh interview, and, and I don't disagree with him, you know? He's had some great accomplishments. He means well, he's telling his truth, he's speaking his truth, his honesty. And, and I think what's, I think people just get so offended and they're projecting at him because, because they don't speak with such honesty, you know, and we're a little bit, we're a little bit, um, you know, that's projection a little bit. Um, so I support Trump and I'm never going to, to align with the far left or with the socialist communist agenda, whatever this is, uh, because there's no personal freedom and because, and because I don't believe in, in all these institutions having, like, having all this control over, over everyone's life. I think we, we have, we we're born in this world to make our own decision. God gave us free will. And if we don't, if we don't want to go to, if we don't want to send our kids to school, we want to do homeschooling, that should be okay. If we don't want vaccinations, that should be okay. Um, we should have the right to opt into certain things, even healthcare. It's okay to have private insurance. Now, I know there's problems in the U.S. with the cost of all this, and that's got to change, obviously. But we've got to have freedom, the choice to decide what we want to do, to opt in and, and to take part in things or not. And, and that's why, unless this changes, there's no way I'm ever going to support any kind of radical left. Or if, I, if I'm involved with it, I'll, I'll, you know, um, I'll you know, render under Caesar, Caesar's what is Caesar's, <laughs> and under God what is God's, as Jesus said. Um, but I'm not going to um, wholeheartedly agree with uh, this lack of freedom um, 
And I think what's going to happen is, as we see with this movement, walk away movement, that people are going, it's going to be, it'll be a mass exodus as people realize that this is, this is the reality. This is the, the future according to the radical left. Walk away.